Hi guys, how's it going? It's Haley of Moth Child Cosplay and today I am doing a kind of like unboxing video. It's not a real unboxing because I've actually already gone through all of these products already. Um, it's more so me sitting down and telling you guys what all I was sent and my sort of first thoughts on it. So if you're wondering what I'm talking about, it's everything in this big beautiful box. Uh, Plaid Crafts, the paint company, blessed me so gracefully and they sent me a really, really nice little uh, crafting kit sort of thing. And I am super excited about most of the things in here and I just wanted to talk to you guys about them and all of that stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the brushes. They sent me quite a few brushes and some things that I've both played around with and haven't touched at all. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start with some of the things that I don't really care too much for, which is actually really just these sponge brushes. Uh, sponge brushes have a really, they have a nice textured, sort of interesting modeled finish when you use them. Uh, I, I just don't really go for that very often. I tend to like very, very smooth paint jobs and these don't really get me the application and the look that I'm going for. So this pack actually had a fourth one in here. Um, it was bigger. It was probably about, I don't know, inch and a half, maybe two inches at the most. And we already used that one and destroyed it by using the brush to stain a wood shelf that Justin was working on. So that's why there's only three in here. Like I said, I actually had this box for a bit and I've gone through and kind of done some stuff with some of the things. So speaking of sponge brushes, they actually sent some sponge brushes that I'm pretty excited about. These ones are already taken out of package because I just wanted to touch them because they looked really interesting. And the only way that I can really describe these is like, it's, it's plastic and then it feels almost like a really, really low density EVA foam. Like it's soft and squishy. Uh, it's definitely not actually EVA because it looks like it's open cell, which I don't know. These specifically said that they're made to not have that sort of sponging look. So I am really excited to give them a try. I don't know if we'll have much of a use for this big one, but like this guy and this one especially, I feel like I might get some use out of. And it'll definitely give like a really, really unique sort of look because like, I've, I don't know, I've never seen anything like this before. I'm sure it exists or maybe Plaid just like came up with it. These are Folk Art brand, which is one of the brands that Plaid uh, creates and owns. So that's really cool. I also was sent some Mod Podge brushes. That's one pack, two pack, three pack, four. So these brushes are made specifically for their product, Mod Podge. And um, they're all, I've already used this guy, which is why he looks dirty. He didn't come like that. I pulled him out and used him and then put him back in because I don't know, that's just kind of how I am, I guess. So, um, these are all made with synthetic fibers. They are specifically made to try and reduce brush strokes with Mod Podge. I don't really like working with Mod Podge in general just because of the price point. There's other products that I feel are, there are products that are really, really similar to Mod Podge, but they're made for different applications. And I tend to go for those over Mod Podge. Uh, as an adhesive, I don't really have a whole lot of experience with it, but as something that you're using to prime like Warbler armor, uh, I, I, I would usually just go with wood glue. So I don't know. I'm gonna try some of these with wood glue and see how that goes. Um, I tend to not really get a whole lot of streaks with wood glue in general because wood glue was pretty good about that when you water it down. And then also I tend to use synthetic brushes. I'm really interested in these guys. They're very, very short, which I don't know. I feel like could work out really, really well or not a whole lot of good stuff with them at all. And uh, this guy is interesting. I'm not sure how much use I will get for this. Uh, it's basically like a little smoother. It gets air bubbles and stuff out and it's got like um, a roller and then like a scraper as well, which this is definitely more of like a paper craft sort of thing. Um, I don't know how much of a use I'll have for it. I might end up using it as like an actual paint roller instead, which I feel like somebody will cringe at the thought of that. And I really hope that one, I don't sound super ridiculous because I am sick. And two, that I don't sound ungrateful. I am incredibly grateful of all of the stuff that they sent me. They had no obligation to send this to me at all. And when I received the box, I was honestly really blown away. It was really, really kind of this company to do this for me. So um, I just wanted to like talk about these things and the things that I got and kind of give like an unbiased sort of opinion. I feel like it's really easy when companies send you things to speak in a very biased manner because like you want to be sent more and don't get me wrong I would love to eventually one day maybe try and partner up with this company but at the same time I don't want to compromise myself and my credibility as a creator and somebody that uses these kinds of tools just to get free stuff if that makes any sense so the last two like I guess you call it hardware related things I got was they sent me 
a reusable palette, which I'm actually super excited about. Palettes are one of those things where when I'm at the craft store, they're like 99 cents and I always look at them and I'm like, yeah, I don't need that. And then I go home and I make messes everywhere. And then they also sent me this paintbrush holder slash cleaner, which I actually had to ask my husband. I was like, what is this? And he pointed out that this right here, I don't know if you guys can see very well, there's like a textured part on the inside, so that way you can kind of take your brushes and rub it across to get the paint out of there. And then they also have these nice little like holder portions right here to where your brush can kind of rest in and it'll get caught so that way the tip doesn't touch the bottom and deform. Okay, so now onto the stuff that everybody is like actually here for, which is the paint. I am pretty excited with like, just the amount of stuff they sent and the variety. Like, this is all paint. Everything that's left in here is paint. Well, for the most part. I'm gonna start with the things that I don't think are technically paint, which is, I'm gonna start with like the one that I'm actually the most excited about and I didn't even know existed. And these paint, this painted finishing, it's like a moss thing. And it's super textured from the photos, assuming that the swirl is exactly what the product will end up doing. That just looks really, really neat. And it's two different bottles. One says that it's like the adhesive, and the other one says that it's the textured moss. I want, like, it just it looks super cool. And I'm really hoping that it looks as cool as the art does on the box. Next up, I'm going to talk about the Mod Podge products they sent me. In the past, I've only ever used the matte, and I tried using it to like glue things together. And like I said, it just, it, it wasn't, I, like I wasn't using it properly is basically what I heard. They gave me a fabric one, a matte Mod Podge, and then a gloss finish. These will definitely, like I'm gonna use them for finishing props, probably for some stuff here and there throughout the years. But I don't think that I'm going to try and rely on them exclusively. I'm gonna try them both with regular synthetic brushes, and then of course with the Mod Podge brand brushes and see if there's even a difference, if it's worth spending the extra money to get the Mod Podge brushes, or if the Mod Podge brushes are just next to the Mod Podge in stores to try and get an extra dollar out of you. I don't know, who knows? I've just kind of always assumed that like a synthetic bristle is a synthetic bristle and there's not much of a difference to them. I could be totally wrong. There might be differences in texture or um, chem uh, chemical break makeup and how everything works and who knows, we'll see. We go ahead and put these back and I'm gonna grab the three big bottles that they gave me. Oh, more Mod Podge. So this is actually a product I don't know if I'll be using at all just because I don't really have much of a use for uh, image transfer medium. I think it's really interesting and I might try and like find an excuse to use it. But like, I, I, I didn't even know this existed. I don't really quite know what image transferring is. I'm assuming it's when you print something and then you try and put it onto something else. But like, in terms of what that entails and what products are usually used versus this and the differences, I really couldn't tell you. So, all that aside, those are the four Mod Podge products they sent me. And now let's get into the paint. They sent me two large bottles of some paints that I actually really freaking love. The metallic line is some of my favorite paint to use, and I'll actually have some swatches that I'll show whenever I pull all of them out. But they sent me this uh, pure gold, and they sent me silver, and I actually just bought a replacement bottle for my pure gold before they sent this box in, and had I known they were gonna send me one, like I would have just waited the extra couple of days. This silver is used on my Zora Magduros longsword and carving knife. This gold was used on my, my uh, longsword, Heartseeker Ashes Bow by Sally White Mainstaff, and then like multiple other random bits and pieces. I believe this was also used on my Grey Warden. But basically, like, I really, I actually genuinely, I love these products. These are products that I've used and that I've bought with my own money over the years, and I'm really excited that they sent me some big bottles because these will definitely last longer than the smaller ones. They sent me quite an assortment of basic matte finish acrylic paints. I'm just gonna kind of grab them and lay them all out side by side so you guys can see. These are just the basic, basic, basic paints. It's interesting to me, and I thought that maybe it was like a different line or something when I first realized it, but some of these have different labels, and I'm not sure if it's because they're a different line, if it's because they were made at a different date, or if it's a different production facility, or what. I think it's, I don't think it really indicates quality. I know that I have Cardinal Red in this sort of label. I think that it's just like what's in stock and what's kind of there, if that makes any sense. I'm still really like, these are, these are all colors that I'm gonna be using, especially like this blue and these yellows. I know that I'm gonna be using those a lot coming up. Um, I, oh yeah, I also wish they kind of sent some pink. 
All right, so the next line that I'm gonna be showing you is their metallic paints, and they sent me, I don't know if these are actually all of the colors in their metallic paint line. I would assume so, because I didn't even know half of these existed. Like, genuinely had zero idea. Uh, I went ahead and made a little swatch card. These are in the right rows, but the order is kind of reversed. I know, I'm sorry. I should really just take the time to redo it, but I am in a little bit of a time crunch because I gotta get ready for work. So, really quick, I will talk about, for the most part, these are all very consistent. The only thing, I don't even know if you guys can really see it, is that this green is exceptionally shiny. It's kind of like a greenish blue, but like the size of these sparkly pigments inside makes it less of a metallic and more of a shiny, like, it makes it more sparkly, the metallic. Um, a lot of these, as you can see, they're pretty sheer, and one of the things that I've actually discovered recently that I really like doing with metallic paints is laying down a matte base coat and then applying these like toppers. So maybe do two or three layers of a matte base coat and then do two layers of a metallic topper on top. If you just try and apply straight metallics to an object, you're going to be stuck doing like 10 to 15 layers. I'm not even joking, it's ridiculous. And that's not just folk art, that's all metallic paints, except for spray paints, obviously. But in my experience, like metallic paints are just thin. Like, all right, so next I'm gonna be talking about a line that I actually only recently discovered, and that is their brushed metal collection. I honestly still don't really know what this term means, brushed metal. I've got a decent idea. It's kind of like, not super duper smooth, sort of that wrought irony, still kind of textured, but obviously still metal look. If that makes literally any sense, it makes sense to me. But uh, I also know that sometimes I don't put things into the right term. So, I used actually this guy for my Crusader armor. Um, I definitely still used it like a topper. I can't really tell you the major difference between the brushed metals versus the metallics. I'd say the only real difference is that metallics have a bit more of a sheen to them. So maybe if you have something that's a bit more textured and you don't want to show off the texturing quite as much, metal, because it's duller, will still give you that metallic look while hiding a bit of that. Un yeah, I, like I don't really know how best to describe it except for like metallics pick up on every single little bump really freaking well. And these guys were able, I, I was able to hide a little bit more of my mess ups with them. They're all pretty good. They're not super streaky. Um, some of the metallics on the other hand were, as you can see, and these are all done with one simple pass along. I forgot to say that earlier. So basically just showing you like what they're like. So this uh, second to last line that I'm about to show you is, is actually the one that I knew the least about, um, but was the most excited about when I saw it come in the box. So these are the color shift pigments. I had heard of them in passing. I had never actually seen them in store. I don't know if maybe the Michaels and the AC More by Me just don't carry them, or maybe they're just always sold out whenever I come by, but they're super cool. I was really intrigued because when I opened the box, they have really neat holographic uh, tops, and yes, I do mean holographic. It doesn't show very well on camera, but they reflect a rainbow. I know the definition of hollow. Don't come for me, Christine. I know, honey. I don't know, they're pretty cool. Uh, I do have some things to talk about with them. Once again, I would really only use these as a topper. I was actually thinking, and I have not done this, so this is just pure theory. If I wanted to use the green color shift to really be able to get a really nice view of the shift and without having to apply like a lot, a lot, a lot of layers, what I think I would do would be something like apply a couple of layers of a matte and then apply one layer maybe on top of the matte of metallic, and then on top of the metallic, apply a layer or two of the color shift. That is a theory. I don't know if it'll actually work or not, but as you can see on my little index card, like they're just, they're thin. They are very thin. They are more sheer, I feel, than the metallics, and they're more sheer than the brushed metal. They're not as sheer as some of the other stuff that I'll be showing you later. Definitely something to really consider. So definitely keep that in mind if you're planning on working with these. Definitely a cool little tool to add to your uh, tool belt, but I don't think that I would rely on one entire bottle to get me through a prop, if that makes any sense. And then these are the last line of paints that I will be showing you today. And this will finish off the collection that they sent me. These are paints that I 
actually had no idea that existed at all. I had never heard of them. I don't know if this is a new thing or if maybe I've just never run across them in my escapades, but these are their uh, Plaid Crafts Leather Studio Paint. Um, I've never worked with leather paint before, so I don't really have a baseline of what to look for or what they're like. Leather paint is something that I've always wanted to do, but in my experience when talking to people about leather paints, they tend to recommend the Jacquard brand, I believe is what it is, which is really, really high quality products, but they're much more expensive. Like instead of paying what I would assume to be two to three dollars for a bottle, you're paying seven to 10. That is something to consider. Um, the other thing to consider is that there's not a lot of color options. Options. In fact, all of these are browns. All of these are shades of brown. These were the only actual colors, I guess you could say, like the only vivids that they sent me, a yellow, a purple, and then a navy blue. I don't know if this is the extent of the line or if there's going to be other colors or if maybe this is just what they sent me because this is what they thought that I would find the most useful, but this is a little disappointing. Um, I will say, however, on my little swatch card, the yellow and the purple, that is one pass. That is one single pass. That yellow was full coverage, that purple maybe require one more coat. Um, these paints should also be super flexible and they're good for vinyl, supposedly. I didn't do a full swatch card of all of these colors because once again, these are all browns. And then second of all, the swatch cards are paper and they're not gonna show the true flexibility of the paints. So let me talk about these paints that were probably, I feel really bad saying this, and I like I really, really hope that I don't come off as ungrateful because that's not my point at all. These were the most disappointing. These were the ones that I was the most excited about in the leather and vinyl line, and they have the least payoff. Like, look, that's the gold, that's the silver. They are just very sheer, um, and I know that a metallic paint, once again, I even said earlier, requires like base coats and things like that, but for a leather paint, especially after swatching these two, I expected something a bit stronger. But anyway, that is that. Those are all of the paints and all of my swatch cards and everything and all of the brushes that they sent me. And I'm actually, I, I know, I feel like I sounded kind of cynical during this whole thing. That was not my intention. Like I said, I'm, I'm like a little sick. I'm a little under the weather and I just wanted to give you guys a really, really clear, unbiased sort of view of how I feel about all of these products and my experiences with some of them and then the ones that I haven't worked with and blah, 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 because I, that's just really important to me. Like, I just want you guys to feel like, I want you guys to be able to trust me. I don't want you to feel like I'm trying to sell you a product just to sell you a product and make money because first of all, I wasn't paid for this. Yeah, thank you guys so much for sticking around. I hope this video was useful to you and if it wasn't, then that's okay. I hope that you still found it enjoyable. Um, I am going to be getting ready to go to work and dealing with these doggos for now and I will see you guys hopefully next week. I'm feeling really inspired with video ideas and I'm trying to really only record when I've got video ideas and a lot of time to do stuff because uh, lately I've just been feeling a little overwhelmed with everything and I, I don't wanna burn out. So um, hopefully I will see you guys next week and if I don't see you next week, maybe I will see you at a convention. Like BlizzCon, we're going to BlizzCon, I'm so excited! Big old shout out to all of my patrons, but an especially large shout out to Things Shoggeth Loud Now, Joshua Cripps, CJ Rose Cosplay, Nicole Wilson, Robin Matthews, Amy Tiran, and Gage the Necromancer.